Being an assassin is all about cunning and lethality, but all of that would be a waste without the drip to back it up. That's why today we're gonna take a look at some of the best armors and outfits you definitely want to get your hands on in Assassin's Creed Mirage. From rags to master assassin and even alien suits, we're going to go over that and more, so make sure you hit that like button if you find this video useful. But while Bassem starts early on pretty bare bones, eventually you're going to move on to your first proper set of armor, which is going to be the Initiate of Alamut outfit. We get this from the main story, so you don't really have to do anything, but this remains one of the best when it comes to assassinations, as it gives you a very good noise reduction whenever you take down enemies with assassinations. If you get the schematics and eventually upgrade this to max, you will gain a 100% bonus to that, which is going to ensure this armor remains very good all the way in the end game. But as you explore the game and find more gear chests, eventually you will get your hands on the Zanj Uprising outfit, which is very good for those who want to perform a lot of illegal activities. So you can find this both early via a story mission, but you can also come here at any time after or before in the upper harbor area east where you will find this boat docked in the same location. So if you head over in the upper deck area, you're going to notice these uh, crates that you can move. So this is a very quick puzzle. You just have to move these out of your way, make your way in the back past these crates and eventually you're going to find a chest containing the armor right there. Picking this up is going to give you a very good effect called Infamous. So this reduces the impact of illegal actions on Basim's notoriety by up to 40% if you upgrade this to max. So whenever you take down enemies and other like civilians see you or when you're doing like pickpocketing, this is going to heavily reduce that notoriety and thus your wanted level. So it's going to um, yeah, make it possible to just go in on a crime spree if you want. The next one is the Rostem outfit and this is yet another armor that gives you bonuses to sneaking around so you can actually find this from a very early on contract called the Marked Coin. It was basically one of the first that I got at any of the Hidden Ones hideouts. So all you have to do is to head over to the location. There's going to be a quick race over there against another different one in essentially reaching a coin first. So if you do that, eventually you just have to bring that coin to a certain contractor. And once you do that, the Marked Coin is done and you're going to be given this as a reward. And it actually looks pretty awesome, definitely one of the most unique of the armors you can get. And it comes with a sound of silence, which is going to make enemies hear you much harder by reducing the noise that you do by moving. Maybe this is a bit better than the one that only reduces noise while assassinations, since moving around this what's mostly going to cause enemies to notice you in the first place. Plus, you can find dice for it. Pretty much every single armor in the game has its own set of dice, up to three in total, that will change the way it looks. And you should definitely keep an eye out for those as well. At number three, we have the Abbasid Knight outfit, more aimed towards tanking and regenerating your HP. And you'll find this on the first level of the Monastery of the Virgins, right here on this side of the map. Either head over there directly or just do it via the main mission eventually. But you're going to reach this main courtyard of the monastery. There are going to be some guards in here that you can clear up or just avoid. Eventually, this is going to also lead you to this opened like room in the back. There's going to be one final guard inside that you can clear up, but also pay attention to this bookshelf onto the side of the wall. Because this is going to be completely movable and once you clear the path, you can just go inside this hidden room and you're going to find a loot chest containing the outfit right there. Now this gives you the Lick Your Wounds ability, so this is going to regenerate a percentage of your HP every second while you are unseen, up to 50% of your max health. This can be really good if you, for example, disengage from enemies and sit in a bush or just hidden for a while. This is going to give you that regeneration, especially if you already consumed all of your healing pots and don't have any other sources of regeneration. It can help quite a ton with that. Moving on at 4, we have the Hidden One outfit. It gives you bonuses to filling up your focus meter much faster and thus performing those focus assassinations a lot more often, which is really cool. So you will find this at the Mazalim Court right here on this side of the map, essentially at the very top of the building right there at the dome area. So once you reach here, there's going to be a bunch of guards that you have to take down and eventually if you go up these stairs, you will notice that the door in the area is barred from the other side. So what you have to do in this case is simply head over in the back onto the opposite side up until you reach this section that you can climb and there you will notice a breakable window. Simply destroy it 
head over inside and this is now going to give you access to the room that contains the chest giving you this really cool outfit and i really like this one this is going to let you fill those focus chunks additionally faster up to like 15 percent whenever you perform stealth kills so that you can then use that to perform those chain assassinations that are much better and much faster plus i think it looks really cool for an outfit definitely awesome and again finding the dice will definitely change its looks now the fifth and most unique armor which also comes with a bonus is going to be the millet's outfit this is something that looks completely outlandish but comes with in my opinion a very op ability that will make it even easier for you to perform assassinations so for this you will have to progress a bit in the main story until you unlock this investigation for nihal and essentially the one called the ancient place this is going to bring you to this oasis up here in the desert. There's even a synchronization point in there that you can use as a fast travel. But essentially, there's going to be a hidden passage slash location beneath this lake that you can find and go inside of. And the first time you visit this, you're going to notice that there are three of these like barred walls that you can't do anything about because you need to place mysterious shards inside. 10 of them in total actually so mysterious shards are these yellow ones you can find in most of the districts as well as the wilderness there are a few of them in each and every single one of the districts and you will usually find them upon these guarded npcs so you will have to take them from their dead cold hands either by assassination or maybe even by pickpocketing though it's much easier to do assassinations i definitely recommend doing it that way but pickpocketing is also an option once you've got all 10 of them, but you can also come in earlier, you can just head over back to the location and start unlocking the items. So the first one to the left side requires just two mysterious shards. This is going to be the dagger called the Samsama, and this gives you lifesteal for every fifth hit. It's going to give you back about 10% of your HP. Then you can grab the suit. It's going to cost five shards, but it also comes with this really interesting effect which says that it causes a flash of light, blinding enemies within 15 meters radius whenever you perform an assassination. However, the way this works is essentially Basim is going to leave down kind of like this smoke bomb. So what it can do is immediately follow up with another assassination, even if another guard has been alerted. So it's really, really great, especially if you couple this with chain assassination, as you can take down up to four enemies instead of just two, even if they were previously alerted. And finally, on to the right side, costing three shards, you can get the sword. This is going to give you blood price, reducing your HP by 50%, but also increasing your damage by 50%. So it's kind of like walking on the edge, you deal a ton more damage, but you are also more susceptible to dying. This can be really good, for example, if you're fighting some of those elite guards. Yeah, you can definitely just destroy their, like, stamina bars a lot faster and thus taking them down a lot easier, but only if you're on point with your parries. And by the way, these all come fully leveled up to max rank 3, so you don't have to worry about any additional schematics. But from this point on, we also have six more costumes. And while two of them can be acquired from the main story, I will only cover the ones that you get from extra sources. So one of them is the Far East Merchant costume. You can just buy this from any vendor. It only costs about 500 gold or whatever that currency is. It looks pretty awesome and you can unlock it relatively early. Or you can also reduce the prices using merchant tokens at any of the merchants in town. The next one is the treasure hunter costume which looks really awesome and as you guessed it you get it at the end of a longer treasure hunt essentially by stealing 18 artifacts for their wish you will have to basically go in every single district as all of them have at least a few npcs with these in their pockets and you can spot them by their yellow gold icons so these are a bit more difficult to pickpocket, which is why I recommend either, you know, getting on point with the timing or just unlocking the master and pickpocketer in the skill tree. But this is going to let you now steal them and bring them back to their wish on three separate occasions. First giving him three, then six, and then nine. Once you give the remaining nine, this is going to complete the achievement, give you a bunch of extra resources, but also give you that really cool outfit. And by the way, you can apply this on any suit of armor, like any outfit, so you can rock it with any default look. Now, also in every district, you will find these lost books, about one or two per district, as well as the wilderness. It can be pretty annoying to find them, but they are also very good because each and every single one of them gives you one skill point. 
So even just for the skill points, they are definitely worth it as there is no ways to gain XP in this game. You will actually gain skill points from specific actions. Like I said, either main story, but some of these side activities too. And once you've got like 12 of them in total, you can just head over to the librarian right here at the House of Wisdom, again in the main city. It's going to wait you right here in the library area. You can give in these items. This is going to again give you an achievement as well as the scholar costume. And this is probably not going to be like the best of them all, but I mean, you can just scratch off another costume of the list or rock with a new kind of look. Now, technically, the last outfit isn't something that you have to specifically hunt for because this is given to you once you reach Master Assassin level. So by simply playing the game, progressing in the main story, eventually you will get this. But I thought it was worth mentioning because it's one of my favorite, really brings in that, of course, classic high-end look. If you really liked AC1, this is going to be a really nice up there. I'm pretty sure that other AC games in the past also had a variant of this, but you can of course have your own Master Assassin in AC Mirage 2. Totally worth it, and it definitely is one of my favorites. For everything else, including additional cosmetics, like the talismans on the back, as well as the dice, make sure to take a look at the enigmas. These are specific hints you will find in many districts of the game, which usually involve either some kind of poetry, a clue, or maybe even sometimes a drawing of a location that holds a specific treasure left behind by somebody. So these clues are always going to be inside of those. You will have to always read them and check around, even pay attention closely to the map until you find those locations. Usually they are always going to be in plain sight, easy to follow. You just need to pay attention to the clues given. And if you do so, you can oftentimes find the specs of dice for every single one of the outfits, as well as additional cosmetics you really want to get. But that is pretty much it with the video. Let me know down below if I missed anything. In the meantime, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.